Welcome to Basic Training. Training has specific goals to help improve one's capabilities, capacities, and performance. Think for a moment the qualities that are produced in a person who is well trained. Responsibility, diligence, good habits, and perseverance. These are the same qualities that are produced in a person, for example, who is involved in sports. Even if your child doesn't participate in sports, they can benefit from the method of being coached. I recently asked my son, what qualities makes a good coach? Several of the answers he came up with apply great to training your children and cleaning a home. Some of them include being able to gain the respect of the team, motivating the team, improving the skills of the team, and preparing a game plan that works. If you apply a coaching concept to your family household duties, you will experience more time to have fun with one another, and you will watch your kids develop into young adults who are responsible and hardworking. They will develop a fantastic work ethic and be able to work as a team in anything they do. The goal is to see household duties as an opportunity to be a team and play the game of life together. Let's get started in learning how to coach our family. The first step in coaching kids is basic training. There's a high level of training and participation with a child until they have mastered the skill. Using the three period lesson, you can successfully coach your kids towards mastering a skill. This model of teaching was developed by a physician named Edward Seguin and later modified by Maria Montessori. Most commonly, it is used today to teach children vocabulary, word recognition, and colors. With a little bit of modification, I have developed a very effective method to use the three period lesson to train children in basic life skills. The basic life skills method is as follows. Demonstrate the task without words. Be very precise in your actions. Have the child tell you what they saw you do. Have the child demonstrate what you did. If the child does not describe it perfectly in step two, that's okay. Let them demonstrate anyhow. Even if they haven't met your satisfaction, this may be an opportunity for you to put that lesson away and try again in a few months. It is very important to pay close attention to the capabilities of a child. Observe fine motor skills, attention span, and a child's size to determine if they're ready to learn a new skill. You can download a list of what activities might be appropriate for certain age groups from my website. This list is a good starting point. Remember the goal is mastery. They will master it quickly if they are ready to learn it. Ethan, I'm going to show you how to fold a shirt. And I want you to pay close attention. And after I'm done showing you how to fold a shirt, I want you to tell me how I folded it before you fold your shirt, okay? Now, try to remember what I did and tell me what I did before I folded it. Um, you flip the right side and then you flip the left side and then you made two squares. Right, now you go ahead and show me. Excellent, high five. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to wipe a baseboard. When you watch me, think carefully about what I'm doing and then after I show you, you tell me what I did, and then you show me how to do it, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me what I did. First you do the top, then the middle, then the bottom. Good, now it's your turn. I'm going to show you the proper techniques for cleaning a window. After I demonstrate it, I want you to tell me what you remember in order, and then I'm going to have you demonstrate back what I did, okay? Okay. Okay, 
did I do? You sprayed the window and then you started from the top and worked your way down. Good. Now you demonstrate. Over time, you will see your child's sense of accomplishment grow. This will bring you great joy and also boost their confidence. At this point, the child is ready to apply that basic skill to their daily routine, even if they're not doing it perfectly.